State Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. Good morning. Please be seated. We'll hear argument in Knight First Amendment v. Donald J. Trump. Mr. Jaffer. Good morning, Your Honors. Jamil Jaffer for the plaintiffs. Public officials across the country now use social media to communicate with and to hear from their constituents. And these social media accounts often serve the same purposes as forums like city council meetings or school board meetings or town halls. The Fourth Circuit just said Facebook, utilized by a county supervisor, is a public forum. Is there any material difference between Facebook and the Twitter account here? The platforms are different. I think that in individual cases, the plaintiffs might be able to make a compelling case that a particular account on Facebook is a public forum. We were counsel to Davison in the Fourth Circuit case, so we think that that case is rightly decided. But I don't think that it follows from this case, from the district court's decision in this case, that every public official's account on every forum, on every platform, is a public forum. I think you have to look at the way the account is used, what resources were used to support the account. So what factors do we look at then? Well, so I think that there are three paragraphs of the joint stipulation here that might be particularly useful to you. One is paragraph 39, which makes clear that the president uses official government resources in connection with this account. So other government officials have access to the account. They draft tweets for the president to post himself. Sometimes they propose language for tweets that the president posts. So this is not an account that the president operates on its own. It's an account that involves the substantial and sustained involvement or investment of resources by other government personnel. Second, paragraph 37 of the joint stipulation makes clear that the government has itself characterized the president's tweets as official statements. And I think we heard the government do that again this morning. But in a variety of contexts now, the government has characterized the president's tweets as official. The press secretary said that to the press, to the media, in a press briefing. The government has said it to various courts, including the Fourth Circuit. So I think there's no dispute that the president's tweets are official statements of the government. Even if that's true, what do you make of the argument that the blocking function exercised by him is a private function? That everything else may be a public forum, and it may be a public Twitter account, but the blocking function that he exercised is a private one? I'm not sure that these two things can be separated in that way, Your Honor. The only reason that the president is in a position to block people from a public forum is that he is the president. There's state action in the creation of the account. No, he's owner of the Twitter account. Sorry, Judge Wall? No, he's owner of the Twitter account and therefore can exercise that control because that comes with his ownership. That's right, Your Honor. That comes with his ownership. The government says that, well, every owner of a Twitter account is in a position to block in the same way that the president is. I think that that argument ends up proving too much because it's also true that the owner of private property is always in a position to exclude people from the private property. But that doesn't stop us from saying when a city councilor, for example, excludes somebody from a city council meeting, that that person was acting in his or her official capacity. The point here is that the president established this account in his official capacity. Not only is it impossible to separate the blocking from the establishment of the account, but even if you sort of focus on the reasons why the president blocked these particular individuals from the account. I thought he started the account in 2009. Isn't that stipulated too? You're right, Your Honor. I didn't mean to say that he started it as president. He started it before he was president, but he began using it as president as an extension of his office. And once he began using it in that way, it became a public forum. And at that point, when he blocked people from the account, he was acting in his official capacity. And if you look at the reasons why these particular plaintiffs were blocked, one of them was blocked after he complained about the president's immigration policies. Another was blocked 
after complaining about uh, health care policies. Another was blocked after complaining about uh, the president's policies with respect to Russia. So even if you focus myopically on the reasons why the individuals were blocked in this case, they were blocked for having criticized the president about uh, his, his policies or, or criticized the president's uh, decisions as president. Um, I guess the other, the other thing that might be worth pointing so, so out So therefore, here, it's the president blocking, not Donald Trump, private citizen blocking. That's Your Honor, I, I don't know of another case uh, in which uh, a public that was a official. Question. Sorry, but right. Well, I, I don't know of any other case in which a public official has uh, established a public forum and then excluded somebody from the public forum, and a court has said, well, the exclusion was done in the private capacity, whereas the the forum was established in in a governmental capacity. If there's a case like that, I I don't know of it. Uh, and it doesn't seem reasonable to separate these two things in that way. Although the, the other side has pointed out uh, Kenny, um, Hyannisport or the Bush Ranch in Texas, that those are private areas even when the president's there. So they are, Your Honor. Can't, can't the president exclude people from, from those properties? Absolutely, Your Honor. Now, it would be a different thing if uh, you know, tomorrow President Trump said, I'm going to host a meeting at, uh, or an open forum at Mar-a-Lago Anyone who wants to come can come, and I'm going to announce, make official announcements relating to my presidency. I'm going to disclose our new policy with respect to North Korea at this forum. Uh, it's an official, and he describes it as an official forum. It's open to anyone. And then he decides at the last minute to exclude people who disagree with him. Uh, it seems to me that would be a violation of the public forum doctrine. That's not usually what happens but, but that's, in Mar-a-Lago. That's because he said it's open to anyone, but that's what right. if he has implicitly said it's it's really only open to people who are my supporters. Then I think you'd be talking about a different kind of case, Your Honor. Then, well, then why I isn't think, that this case? Because the president didn't say that initially. The president opened this to everybody. There are 50 million uh, followers to this account. Um, there, there are cases So, so having like, done that, mm -hmm. De fa well, de jure, but de facto and de jure, having said nothing about who can participate, he, is, he, he has no ability then to limit this forum that he has unwitting, I'll say unwittingly, I'm not sure it is, but unwittingly created. On the basis of viewpoint. Uh, now, if the president tomorrow decided that he wanted to institute some viewpoint neutral time, place, and manner restrictions on this account, I, I don't think those would necessarily raise First Amendment concerns. The reason this case raises those concerns is that the president blocked these individuals because they criticize government policy. Uh, and that is stipulated. The parties have stipulated to that. Uh, uh, I just want to point, point out one consequence just, of... Just so I have it, Mr. Jaffer, where is that in the stip? Do you remember? And if you don't, don't worry about it. Uh, right, right in the opening of the stip, you're on okay. the first paragraph of the stipulation. Um, on this issue of, of, of uh, blocking versus the establishment of the forum, I think it's worthwhile to consider the implications of the government's theory here. If, if, if the court were to hold that uh, this kind of blocking is beyond the reach of the First Amendment, that would have implications far beyond this particular context. It, it would seemingly apply to the at POTUS account, to the at White House account as well. It would probably apply to every public for every uh, government website that has a comment, uh, 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 you know, a space for for public comment. I think you would be opening the door to uh, distortion and manipulation of those spaces as well if you were to accept that uh, that that line of argument. Could could uh, the president block? Uh, anti-Semitic uh, material from um, the uh, tweet stream? I think Race, that... Racist, rabidly racist material? I think that under a, if the policy were viewpoint neutral, then I think that the First Amendment uh, might permit it. I think you'd have to analyze it's, the... It's anti-Semitic. I think probably yes, Your Honor. Um, I, I think you'd have to ask about the... So the way that the court has addressed these limitations, the limitations that are imposed in the first instance, um, the court has asked whether those limitations are viewpoint neutral and whether they are uh, necessary to facilitate the operation of the forum. So if you look at a case like um, 
uh, like Forbes, for example, which involved the public broadcaster that excluded somebody, one candidate, from uh, a public debate. The court asked whether the limitations that the public broadcaster had placed on this particular uh, space were viewpoint neutral and consistent with the purposes of the forum. I think that's the analysis. I don't, you know, I don't know that I know the answer, the ultimate answer to the question, Judge Parker, but I think that's the way that the court would analyze it. It would certainly be a different case from this one because, you know, we are stipulating in your hypothetical that it's not viewpoint neutral. Could I ask you about a decision of the district court below, and that is the district court found that only first order replies were uh, in the public forum. You maintain that the, the, the whole thread is within the public forum. Why is that if the president's not involved in those replies to replies and retweets to, you know, that other people are, are doing in the thread? Well, I think it, it's because that while the president doesn't have direct um, direct control over what we might call sir replies, you know, the, the, the replies to replies, uh, the president's decision to block somebody from his account has an effect on that person's ability to participate on the same terms as other users at that level. So for example, if you are somebody who's been blocked on the president's account, um, you don't see replies to the president's tweets unless you follow the replier already independently. And even if you see that reply because you follow that person independently already, uh, you don't see the tweet, the president's tweet, that initiated the whole chain. Uh, and so your ability to participate on the same terms as other users, you don't have the same ability to participate on the same terms as other users uh, in the comment threads. Now, ultimately, even I don't think it makes a difference. Even though electronically by, I won't say microseconds, but you probably could put yourself in a position of being able to do that. You're right, Your Honor, that there are workarounds. Um, the, the workarounds involve both time and burden, and that is sufficient to establish a First Amendment injury here. Assuming uh, this is a forum. Assuming that it's, it's a forum. A public forum, yeah. Um, J Judge Droney, just, just um, uh, to, to underscore one point here, ultimately I don't think it matters whether the district court is right about the scope of the forum or we're right about the scope of the forum because uh, even on the, the district court's view, our plaintiffs were excluded from a public forum. Um, and, you know, maybe there's a dispute about what the scope of the forum is, but the relief is the same in either, in either you case. You didn't cross-appeal this point We either, did not. But you think we can reach it, or, or we need not to? Is that what I you're don't saying? think you need to reach it, Your Honor, because, again, it doesn't matter. The ultimate relief would be the same. Um, Judge Hall, you, you, you asked the question, um, or you, you, you just said, if it's a public forum. Uh, I don't think... Um, the outcome of this case would be any different even if it weren't a public forum because of our two other claims. Um, you know, even if this is not, uh, once you get to state action, uh, once you've established that this account reflects state action, then even if there's no public forum involved, the president has excluded the plaintiffs from uh, a channel used to disseminate official government information, and he's excluded them for no reason other than viewpoint. And he has also similarly excluded them from a channel uh, available to the public for petition, uh, for petitioning the president for redress of grievances. And he's done it, again, for no reason other than viewpoint. So, you know, I think that, you know, we've litigated this case as a public forum case because the public forum case law seems to fit very naturally with what, um, what the president's Twitter account is. Uh, but even if it weren't a public forum, I think that the government would have the same First Amendment uh, obstacle to the argument that it is. So if we uh, have a, have a uh, concern about or, or choose to avoid analyzing whether it's a public forum, sorry, let's, we, we find hypothetically that it's not a public forum. Do we need to send it back to the district court for further analysis? No, I don't think so, Your Honor. It's a purely legal question. We have a joint stipulation where the parties have set out the facts, and I think that uh, the parties have briefed the legal question um, fairly comprehensively, so you could reach those. I don't want to dissuade you from reaching the public forum question. Again, I think that's the most natural body of law here, or the, 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 the body of law that applies most naturally. Um, and 
uh, you know, the, the, the only question you really need to answer, again, once state action is out of the way, the only question you need to answer is, uh, was this uh, space a space that the government opened up to the public at large for, uh, for expression? And I think that question is easy to answer because the whole point of Twitter is to facilitate um, uh, interaction between users to facilitate communications. If the government had wanted a one-way channel, um, it could have used a blog or it could have just issued more frequent press releases, but instead the president used his Twitter account. And Twitter uh, is called a social media platform precisely because it allows people to respond uh, to users and to respond to one another. Um, so I think that the question about um, uh, you know, whether the president intended to establish a forum is, uh, again, relatively easy to answer. Thank you. If there are no further questions, Your Honors, I'll rest on our papers. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Jaffer.